When we started this motor controller project, I said that we wanted to make some radical changes for what the maker can do with regards to motor control. I said that I wanted to make it easier and generally build a platform that enables a maker to use the right type of motor in every application. So far, we've just been playing around. <laughs> we've been doing some proof of concept, prototypey stuff, but things are about to get spicy. Why? It's new tool day. A part of completing my objective will require building some amount of circuit boards. And that's at a quantity that I'm not really used to working with. I'm not really used to building tens of a board. So that a couple of you guys, I mean, if you want some motor controllers, you can get one when this project is all done. And there's this guy, Steven. Um, he's been doing some pretty cool stuff in the world of pick and place machines. And I think that's a really cool idea because that should make small scale manufacturing a lot easier. In fact, he said that that's one of his like main objectives. That's one of his main objectives. So make sure to check out his YouTube series about building this pick and place machine that he's been doing. It sounds like a really cool project. Like it'll be pretty useful. To be frank, He's setting up for operation at a scale that I don't even want to think about. I'm not trying to launch a company around this concept. I just want to throw a couple development kits into the world and move on with life, right? We've got a bunch of projects and this is just one idea. I don't want to get sucked into this forever. So I am all too familiar with hand building electronic prototypes. I'm super familiar with the painstaking time and effort associated with soldering every component every single pin of every part to a PCB. And I'm not really looking to do that for this project. I'm also familiar with the right way of assembling circuit boards, You're getting a full pick and place machine, getting a reflow oven, and getting an end of line tester at the end of all that. It would be awesome to, to get this all set up, but I, I'm not gonna do that either. <laughs> Instead, I want to fall right in the middle, but what does in the middle even mean. I want to develop a process to, to have this product that produces reasonable results when producing small numbers of boards. And like I said, it's new tool day. Um, I was looking around the internet, looking for a way to get decent results with an entry level reflow setup. And I've seen some toaster oven hacks. I've seen the tiny desktop reflow ovens. And I've come to realize that there is no great solution for off-the-shelf, cheap-as-you-can-get reflow ovens. What I did find is this board heater for a rework station, and I'm not really sure if this will get hot enough to reflow a board. This might require some additional heat from a hot air gun or something like that. But even if this can't operate like a reflow oven, it will be incredibly useful for soldering prototypes. So either way, I don't feel like I'll be losing money. And overall, the reviews on this was pretty good, all things considered. That can be very helpful for components with big thermal pads or big copper areas or big planes when you have big current carrying traces or current shunts and stuff like that. These are incredibly useful, and I probably should have had one all along. And to say this thing also claims it can get up to proper reflow temperatures. Perhaps it'll need an enclosure, but this seems like a decent enough platform for getting started. I'm getting a little ahead of myself though. Now you might be wondering why I didn't get one of those cheap reflow ovens. And it really comes down to listening to the reviews. I noticed that on the reviews of almost every single one of those products, there's a lot of mention of them either thermally running away and getting super hot or not heating up at all, having poor temperature regulation, which is basically a non-starter for a reflow oven. Like they need to be more precise than your average oven. So then they get into how they all replaced the controller and then gave these things a second life, basically just using the shell and the heating element. I don't really have that time just to tinker around and get it set up. And if I really need a reflow oven, I'd rather pay you know, twice as much or even three times as much instead of that hundred bucks to get something that's kind of sketchy and doesn't really work. So then, why are we here? Because I want to figure out if we can reflow a PCB with this board here. And 
I need to steal some LEDs off this old board. <laughs> and while I'm at it, I figured that some of you might be interested in hearing how this Yeehaw! 853A board heater seems to work. Now you know, if you're a longtime viewer of VE for everyone, that I am no stranger to cheap as anything test equipment. And, well, this is no exception. And if there's one thing that I've come to learn, it is that none, not even one of these pieces of equipment has ever been ground bonded. Hmm. Well, that's different. <laughs> I have never seen that before. Huh. Well, at least it's connected. I mean, we'll have to take a look at how well it's actually bonded, but that is a promising start. You know, while, while we're at it, uh, let's check uh, from line. Okay, line and neutral are both isolated. Okay. I do hear a, like a rattling noise. That's a little concerning. I don't know what's up with that. Let's crack this thing open. Let's see what's going on. But overall, um, the sheet metal feels kind of cheap. I'm not going to lie. It feels kind of cheap. It's very, very thin. Um, claims to be 450 watts at 120 volts, which is not too many amps. That's less than 10, because uh, 10 amps would be 1,200 watts. That should be less than 5 amps, so really reasonable power consumption. Uh, one of these screws on the bottom is loose, so that's not great, but and I've got a screwdriver, so it's not really a problem. It's just spinning loose. Okay, I guess we're going to crack this thing open. Uh, uh, appears to just be a couple uh, screws on the side. Shouldn't be a big deal. All right, in theory, we should be in. One more. Okay. And look at that. So this whole thing just comes off. So that's easy enough. Let's make sure these are all nice and tight then. Man, that sheet metal is thin. That is not confidence inspiring. Okay, I'm gonna hand tighten these fasteners. Okay, so yeah, those are pretty darn tight. Not much we can really do there. Nice little mesh to keep fingers out of there. Very cool with some uh, goop. There's like some stuff in there to keep it from loosening with vibration. It's always nice to see. It's just this little like fine metal powder just kind of like all over. But we'll set that to the side for now. Focus on the main event. Okay, so what do we have here? We have some insulation. Input 110, output 10. Yeah, there's like this... Looks like bits of ceramic. Okay, I'm gonna go dump this in the trash. Dump that out. Oh, look at that! Yeah, they actually prop her with a star washer. Okay, let, let it be said that there is a cheap Chinese product that has even a tightened, that is darn tight, a tightened heat. This is like a fiberglass insulation that they've applied as well. Insulate, it, it, the wire gauge seems a little bit Shorter than I would expect, but fast on, coming through, and I think they even have a fused. Holy cow, this is good. Wow. Like, it's not UL rated, which, I mean, whatever. I mean, so they have this ceramic heating element in this metal box, which they seem to have affixed through some means. So I have the ceramic heating element that's in a box that has a PTC on it, which is cool to see. And it has this like, like this ceramic insulation 
coming up to the heating element, which seems like it'll put up with a lot of abuse, then shrouded in the secondary insulation. It looks like that is mains. Looks like they have mains going straight to the circuit board um, with a triac or something to switch that heater in. And mains going everywhere, so yeah, whatever. I'm glad that this is earth grounded because holy cow, there's a lot of mains flying around this board. So seeing uh, PE come through is nice. Se seeing earth come through is really, really nice. Um, okay, so yeah, then they've got like this hot section with the wall to help keep the electronics cool. Like, man, I mean, it's by no means perfect. But they have this goop to keep all the connectors in so it doesn't vibrate loose and cause arcing, which is a huge cause of fires. So, I mean, as far as a cheap piece of equipment off Amazon goes, that's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it is pretty good. Uh, looks like it has thermal runaway protection built in, in, in the bottom, thermal fuse. Can't really verify that, but then they have this knob at the front that should be earth grounded because it's screwed to the chassis. And even then, you have a plastic knob keeping your hand away from anything potentially dangerous. I'm a fan. The only thing that looks objectively sketchy is they've got uh, like an exposed wire, like the insulation is not as far in as I would like, but. Yeah, I'll give it to them. Some kind of a socketed micro for the brains, and it's about their, all there is to it. So I am going to tighten down those couple things that needed tightening. Um, it's one of these down here. This is the one that is scary loose. So it seems like somebody somewhere made a questionable decision because when you tighten this bottom screw, it loosens the upper one, which seems to have caused a problem here um, where some of these standoffs were loose, but I just grabbed it with a wrench, finished tightening it, and now that seems just fine. Of course, you want everything tied to ground just in case there's a fault. I am using this system through a GFCI. I always run sketchy equipment like this through a GFCI. The ground will if it's a good ground bond, will always protect you um, because it will pass all that current back to Earth so it won't go through you. So basically, I'm going to run this thing through, through a GFCI, right? Just in case. Knowing that this thing's bonded to Earth is great because if that thing sees, I believe the threshold's 20 milliamps. If it sees 20 milliamps of current that is not flowing through the usual path and is coming back through ground it will cut power to the whole system and turn it off, which is great. This is put back together. It's time. I can't put it off any longer. We'll just use everything that was provided. Uh, here, use the power cable. First of all, I'm going to make sure this is a UL listed cord. I have enough of these. If it's not UL listed, I'm just going to throw it right into the bin. Uh, all UL listed cables will have markings along their edge. Here it is. I see 0.75 millimeters squared, 300 volts. Yeah, I'm not seeing a UL. I'm not seeing a CSA. All right, into the bin with you. Uh, oh, right. I wanted to check the rating of the fuse. Pop out the fuse holder. Comes with a spare. What is this one rated for? It is rated for six amps. Six amps, 250 volts. So there you go. We're not gonna pull much more than six amps for very long. <laughs> that fuse will blow. I will run this down to the GFCI and we'll see What's happening? Before we get this thing hot, let's not be silly. I just want to get this set up. Let's put that one basically all the way to the back. It 
Let's put that one right there. We've got that right over the working area, which is right there. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. Well, here goes nothing. We've got the GFCI. I'm gonna plug it in. Okay, well, we're on. The GFCI didn't trip. Um, that's a step. So, it's the actual temperature, set temperature. I don't know. Goes up to 300-ish. Let's go for it. Let's start at 250. Can't really tell if it's doing anything. Oh yeah, it claims to be heating up. Oh yeah, sure enough. It's heating up. It says we're at 250. I don't know if I believe that. And that smells awful. I am not inside the house. <laughs> I am out in the garage and I am grateful for that at the moment. <laughs> oh goodness. If that was inside, I would not be happy. But I mean, that's soldering in a nutshell, right? Uh, I should not be touching that with my hands. That is stupid. <laughs> Based on what I'm seeing, I assume that the temperature that it's measuring is internal somewhere, like inside that ceramic heating element, which is not a bad thing, to be clear. <laughs> There's this little light on the front that seems to indicate when the heating element's on versus off. And every time it flicks on and off, I can see my overhead LED flicker. You can probably see that as well. That is annoying. This thing is really on a hair trigger. Must be hysteretic control that is pretty minimal. No components flying off the board yet, though they are definitely warm. All right, I'll go for it. I'll just set it all the way up. This is definitely getting hot. I have no desire to touch this. Doing okay? Let's do a quick test here. I've got this flux. Ooh. That is hot. Okay. So it is, it is close. I can see that flux burning off. But let's... Take this a step further. So with the hot air gun in combo. Oh, look at that. That was easy. Oh no. I think I just destroyed that one. Just popped the lens off. Oops. Yeah. I think I have some I think I have some more thinking to do on this whole assembly method thing. This does not seem like the final form. It may be useful, but I don't think we're there yet. That's pretty cool. It is not a reflow oven. I will give you that. It is not a reflow oven. However, we're going to get a lot of good use out of this. I can already tell. You guys remember this one? This one's a fun little board. That's the ESD monitor. And I do love this little board, but I already have a couple spares like assembled. 
This is just a spare, basically fab at this point. Cool. That one is secured. And while that heats up, let's test some of these salvaged LEDs. Let's kind of vet our assembly or disassembly with a quick little diode check. So you got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at that. Except for the one that I absolutely destroyed. We're looking all right. So I think we'll just put this in by putting some, I've been meaning to load up the test points for a while. Just gonna load these up into a test tube. I really need to just buy a bunch of these. There we go. Some LEDs. It's about as hot as it's gonna get, and yeah, no reflow. It's unfortunate. You know, of all the designs we've done, this one's actually also pretty cool. back in the box and I'm actually returning this and let's talk about why. So after I recorded the video, I actually had a pretty positive review of this thing and I still think in my opinion is vaguely positive, but it doesn't do what I wanted it to do, right? This works really well as a board preheater, but it doesn't get hot enough to solder or desolder anything. It requires additional heat from a heat gun. And just the power rating alone should have been enough to tell me that. This thing's rated for about 600 watts. And that should have been enough to tell me that this is not going to be able to desolder something on its own the way that it is. That's kind of on me. But this product claims to get as hot as 400 degrees C, and it doesn't even when the display shows 400C as the actual temperature. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, call it what you is. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's their fault. Maybe it's a little bit of everyone's fault. But at the end of the day, I want to use this thing to desolder stuff. And I found something else that should be able to get hot enough to reflow solder. Um, it has its own problems, but hopefully we'll get that other piece of equipment in and we'll be able to actually reflow a board without providing additional heat. That's really the goal. That's what we want to do. So hopefully in our next video, we'll, we'll get that other piece of equipment. And the replacement equipment is rated for, I think, about 1,000 watts instead of around 600. And it's apparently only capable of getting up to about 350C. But I've heard that thing runs hot. This one runs cold. And I saw a video of someone reflowing a board with it. So hopefully it'll work. Coming up next, we'll be using this setup to assemble some motor prototypes, and I'm really excited for the next step of this project. As always, I'd like to give a special thank you to our channel members on Patreon and YouTube. I really appreciate the extra step you've taken to support us directly. I'd also like to thank you all for your support through viewership, comments, sharing what you do with others, those who choose to watch ads, and those who are subscribed. It has been awesome and humbling to watch this EE for Everyone community grow, and that just can't happen without you. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!